Good morning, folks. Ripple Crown here coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. This was a very exciting round 13. Uh, since I last recorded, doing some thinking about strategy and this is kind of like BBR because the basically each side had three more turns to finalize their plans and sometimes it forces a side or basically everybody to just basically make things happen now. Uh, everybody has their objectives and sometimes to meet your objectives you got to force you got to do things a turn or two before you might be ready. And what I've learned in playing BBR in an eight, which is an eight round game, is that sometimes those attacks you do work out. In this case for the Germans, very good, very good decision to attack Calcutta. The dice were on their side. They did have an edge in units by nine. Uh, and most of their units, or more than half of them, were the heavy hitters. Uh, either tanks or better so rolling a six or better and so they did not need the use of their bombers and medium bombers that were they had built so and why they had done that was because they needed to take Calcutta now because in the event that they lose another victory city they needed to also guarantee that they were able to do two things one is to take Calcutta take Cairo which so their air force, um, which is, you know, better than 15 planes uh, and a couple fast movers need to go to make sure the Germans are able to take Cairo if the Italians fail. So they need to guarantee that. So they needed to act now so their aircraft would have something else to do. In addition to taking Calcutta, um, depending on how many, it's they many units they had left, they needed to have these fast units available um, in the event they needed to go liberate or recapture Singapore. So they're currently, uh, they need to go two spaces, so one, two, down in here to Singapore. So that is what the Germans' uh, strategy was. Um, so we'll see what happens. And the British know now that, hey, uh, it's probably a done day for Cairo now. So what did they do? Well, they loaded all their transports, so four loaded transports here, and and they headed and they dropped off their ground units here in Ceylon. So um, lots of key things that are at play here. So that's eight units that can go and possibly attack Calcutta with the complement of their uh, three planes on the carrier. So those planes, or at least two of them, came from Western Australia. Um, they went one, two, three, four, and landed on the carriers, which I did not actually plan that in advance. That was just some calculating. So this turn actually took a significant amount of time. One rolling out this battle here in Calcutta um, and planning strategy, but also we're going to get into what happened with Japan in a second. So the Australians came down here. Uh, they built an air base. They brought as many ground units as they could. The Japanese uh, basically abandoned Borneo. They grabbed uh, a couple units there and dropped them off in Singapore um, and brought down another transport full of guys. And uh, so they're reinforcing Singapore as that is a victory city. And what happened here, it was the mother of all naval battles uh, basically 64 units aside uh, for the, and what was the deciding factor? Well, the, the American fleet came in and attacked the Japanese, which was Japan had a scramble. And there was in the second round of combat, the American dice were better overall, but the second round of combat, Japan rolled 15 aircraft. Um, at a six or better, and they only scored two hits. That was the deciding factor, which sort of, the battle ran four rounds, but the American dice, I think on that round, on second round there, I think they had nine out of 15, and the Japanese only had uh, two. That was the deciding factor. Um, and from there, when the dice go or not in your favor, it was sort of downhill. So what did America do? They did a landing in 
two infantry. That was their only dis declared was they sent two infantry and one transport into Formosa in case the battle went south because it was not a guaranteed victory. This was a do or die. America had to act now and they had to act now. They didn't, I didn't even want to do this attack at all. Um, and that was simply because if they lost, it was game over. Um, because they, and they, the reason they had to act now was because they had to land here um, and had to basically prevent Japan from using their naval transports to keep going back up here to J Tokyo and grabbing units and reinforcing all their victory cities. They had to do it now because they, they knew that if Japan had one more turn of reinforcing Hong Kong or reinforcing Shanghai, that even if America won the naval battle, they would not have enough ground units to then attack Hong Kong or attack Singapore or attack Shanghai. So they had to do it now, which this sets up well for America. They did a non-combat movement. They dropped off all their ground units and they landed all their aircraft um, in this territory here. I think it's Quang Tung. I think it's Quang Tung. Anyways, Quang Si or Quang Tung. Quang Tung. So they're all sitting there in Quang Tung. They've got 14 aircraft. They also have, it didn't fit in there, they've got three B-29s and a, and a B B-25 all sitting there. And it was also probably the B-29s that, that helped. I mean, three units that roll four dice each. Um, that also, even though they had fewer units, you know, basically the same amount of units, that it kind of helped the allies out. And, you know, Japan also had an advantage on its side in the sense that they had seven transports that basically, you know, every round, you know, if they needed a one, roll one to score, well, they, I think, rolled four hits total and four rounds of combat. So the transports did their job in terms of trying to even out the 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 unit count, but, you know, because the transports have to be taken last, but it was to no avail. The... Uh, the Americans won. They survived with three damaged battleships, one destroyer, and their air force. So they lost everything else. And I think that's a trade the Americans will take, definitely. Because now the Allies have the option. They're going to need to... Basically take two two victory cities away. So they're going to need to take either... Singapore, or they're going to need to take Hong Kong or Shanghai. So uh, out of the two, they've got to get three. And the Russians there, they s killed about another nine uh, Japanese units that were making their way to Hong Kong, which is also why the Americans had to act. Um, last turn, the KMT came down here and liberated the Burma Road because the Japanese basically abandoned it. Um, so the KMT is live and well. The CCP's territories have been liberated. Basically, all of China uh, has been liberated by the Russians and the KMT. And the over here, Germany uh, was trying to reinforce Stalingrad in case Russia tried to make a play. Um, but this is kind of... Basically, what the Russians might do here is prevent the... Germans from reinforcing Calcutta because if Germany now decides to send all of its fast movers towards Singapore they could be leaving Calcutta up for the grabs but Germany I mean they're kind of I don't want to say a non-factor over here in the Atlantic but they have an option here and they could attack actually America didn't even do its build yet America still has to do its build Basically, America's build isn't going to really factor. They were going to build a bunch of fast movers here. Um, basically, the only play the Germans have here is definitely not London, definitely not Washington. They would not win this naval battle. Uh, and if they did, they would not have enough ground units to take Washington. So their only play here next round is to do a landing here in Quebec and kill you know these ground units. There's about seven ground units there, and they've got... Uh, seven transports, so they should win that, but then the Americans are going to have to liberate Quebec from the uh, Germans. So that's all Germany has left to do here. They did build another carrier with four aircraft on it and a couple more submarines, um, but I, it's unfortunately Germany is just uh, 
they're too far away from making, you know, a, a victory city play in the in the Pacific other than the Singapore or Calcutta. So, but they have been, and I've got to say this game in total, um, and, you know, it's playing when you've got time to think about things, folks. Kind of what happens is, is you start counting units. So if the Americans are building, say, five boats in the Pacific, well, Japan knows that it's a turn away. So they've got to be building a minimum five boats themselves. And same over here in the Atlantic. If Germany is putting, say, five or six subs in the water or whatever they are, the Allies, you know, have to basically reinforce Washington uh, with either ground units or Navy to defend that off. So it's kind of a game of read and react. And that's kind of what both sides have been doing. Mind you, when you're playing solo, you kind of know what the other side's doing, but you can also see it on the board. It's not like it's a big secret. If you're building transports, you know that you have to prepare for an amphibious attack and have ground units defend it. And if they're building Navy to come take out your Navy, you have to match, match that. So, um, but in saying that folks, um, We'll see, I, I think this game is still up for grabs. Can Japan has a turn left to defend Shanghai. They're gonna probably build a fortification in Hong Kong, a fortification in Singapore, and we'll see if they can hold out for two more rounds. So thanks for watching folks and stay tuned for the showdown coming up. Actually, one last thing, the Russians did build a heavy bomber. So that rolls three dice at four. It could attack Hong Kong next turn. Uh, that's why they built it. So, um, so yeah, stay tuned.